Hello, everybody. Welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson. And today we are going to announce the winner of our January 2024 design challenge. We received dozens of submissions for this challenge and we saw a lot of great designs, but the winner did a few things that I really didn't expect and that I really liked. So let's jump right in and check out some of the great designs that we saw as part of this challenge. Okay, everybody, it is that time. I am pleased to announce the winner of our January 2024 design challenge. Drum roll, please. The winner is Alex Virich. Alex works as a robotics engineer in British Columbia, and he submitted a design that went above and beyond the requirements for this challenge. The layout looks great, and he did a few very cool things that I hope you will all appreciate. We're gonna dive deep into Alex's design in just a few minutes, but Alex was not the only person that did some cool stuff in this challenge. We're gonna highlight a few honorable mentions first, Let's jump in. Our first honorable mention is Gunay Turan. This board is a four layer board and I saw a lot of signal ground power signal boards, but this one actually intermixed power and ground on layer three. Layer three and layer four are working very nicely together and you could have put the stuff on layer three onto layer four, However, I do like the way that this was done. When I put layer three and four on top of each other, you can see that we have some routing around the power island on layer three. That's good because we're not gonna have any major EMI problems with this type of design. Our next honorable mention is Scott Pelletier. And the thing that I like about this one is Scott included an enclosure. This was not part of the design requirements, but it illustrates going a little above and beyond to do something unique. Our third honorable mention is Umesh Main. Take a look at this circular board. This board has a little bit of odd placement because of the fact it is circular, but it does look very nice and you do actually nicely maintain the isolation in this board despite the fact that you made it a little difficult on yourself by going circular. Umesh is not the only person that did an interesting shape board. Helmi Yusuf also did this hexagonal board with this very interesting cutout in the center. Again, makes it a little difficult going with an odd shaped board. However, the routing and placement was good enough to maintain isolation throughout the entire design. And you can see here, it actually all fit onto two layers. Great job. Thanks again to everyone that submitted designs and thanks to our honorable mentions. Let's dive into the winning design from Alex Virich. Now, when I first opened this design, I saw what looked like a big gray window here. And I was a little taken aback until I zoom out and I realized there's actually an enclosure here. So first things first, way to go above and beyond because this is clearly a custom enclosure. The other thing here is you can see that all of the inputs and outputs are located over here on the right side, protruding from the enclosure. And then we even have some holes here where we can see the temperature sensor. Very nice job. Now let's go ahead and turn off the 3D body just for a moment. And now we can really see what's going on with this board. So here you can see all of the different sections are very nicely arranged. Here's where we have our temperature sensor and check this out. The temperature sensor is located in a very specific region of the board that's actually going to be shielded or isolated from all of these components. And it has air intake and air exhaust very clearly marked. Very great job. Here we also have shielding going all the way around the outside of the board. What this is doing is it's allowing to make a very low impedance contact directly with the enclosure while also separating the temperature sensor region from the rest of the components. So this is gonna be really good for noise. And when we start looking at the routing, we'll see why that's the case. Then over here, we have all of our ethernet stuff uh, very closely arranged down in this corner. Once again, great job. And then over here, we have our power section. We have our uh, output regulator here at U7. And then here we have the PIC microcontroller. Now here's the PCB layout in 2D. So you can see here when I turn on the top layer, you can trace out everywhere that we have this chassis ground. You can see it right here marked ground in. This is basically our isolated ground region for our incoming ethernet signals. And it wraps all the way around and it goes over here and shields this temperature sensor very nicely. 
You can also see here when I go to these other layers that this uh, chassis region passes through the entire PCB stack up. So great job on that. Now this is a four layer stack up and I was anticipating that most people would do it on four layers. We saw a couple six layer designs, we saw some two layer designs, most people did it on four layers. I think with this being a digital board, including ethernet, that was to be expected. So great job on this. You can see here that power is routed and then we have ground on the two inner layers. So this is a signal, ground, ground, signal board with routed power. Going down to the bottom layer, we can see here, we also have some routed power. Here's our 3.3 volt uh, digital rail. And then that touches everything here in this section of the board. And remember, just going back up to the top layer, that's where our PIC microcontroller is. Now, one thing I wanna do is jump into one of the schematic pages here because uh, Al Alex did something that uh, some other people asked about, and it really is a best practice when working with current sense resistors. So here in this 12 volt regulator, we have a current sense resistor right here at R33. And you'll notice here we have a net tie, NT1 and NT2. Now, I've built this circuit myself. I know that it works without using net ties. You could technically use the ground plane as the zero volt reference. However, it is a good practice generally on switching regulators that use a current sense resistor to break this off with a net tie. And that is exactly what Alex did. And then this routes back over to the main regulator chip. Now, just jumping over to the PCB layout and taking a look again at this regulator circuit. If we just go over here to the regulator, we see here that we have a very small loop between this inductor and the transistors that make up this switching regulator. So all of that is kept very nice and tight. It is kept above a ground plane like you should do when you have switching components. And this is all gonna be a very low noise design. So great job on this. Another thing here that Alex did very well was the use of thermals. Now, I noticed that a lot of people were putting thermals on every single VIA, and basically that arises because the default design rule in Altium Designer was not changed when creating the project. However, if you just go over to here on some of these through holes, you will see very clearly we have some thermals on this through hole connector and same goes for some other points where we have some through holes. So good job on that as well. Next, you can see over here, if we just take a look at the grounding strategy, here, if I turn on layer two as a solo layer, you can see here we have a very clearly marked isolation barrier across this isolation transformer. And if we just go through the stack up, that ground cutout does proceed all the way through that transformer. So in this particular case, that's done to minimize parasitic capacitance across that transformer, which could impact high frequency isolation. I think in this case, it's not gonna be a killer for your ethernet signal bandwidth if you did include the ground below that uh, transformer. However, in this particular case, this is a best practice. This is the kind of thing that you would adapt from a switching regulator that uses a transformer for isolation. So it's kind of the same thought process there that was implemented here on this design and it all looks very nice. Next, I mentioned earlier on the uh, temperature sensor that I would expect this to be a reasonably low noise design. Now, if we go up here to the top layer, you see that we don't have the routing, but if we just go into the ground layer here on layer two, we now see where the routing comes out from this temperature sensor. The routing comes off here to the right and then goes up through a couple of vias. Now you'll notice here that it passes over this split between the chassis region and the system ground region. However, we also have a ground net here to the right that's at the same potential as our system ground, and that helps provide the reference for this signal line coming off of the sensor. Now, if I just go up to the top layer, you can see where that signal line comes in. It's right here. And then it routes straight down over here to the PIC microcontroller. And it basically avoids as many digital signals as possible. So this is a good example of what you should do when you have a mixed signal system is try and keep that analog line isolated from any of your digital stuff. And notice that we don't need any crazy tricks like you know guard traces or stitching via fences or anything like that for this particular line. We've just routed it straight over above ground and that's gonna provide some very nice isolation against any of these other signals. And then notice 
There's really only one trace that's even anywhere close. All of the other stuff is located over here on the right hand side of the microcontroller. So we really don't need to worry about it from a noise perspective. So is there anything that I would do different in this design? Well, I did see a few things when looking in 3D and the only stuff that I think I would do different in this design are really more things that are more to my preference when producing a PCB, but they aren't really gonna impact the functionality. So you'll notice here on the top layer, we have a lot of vias that are untented. Personally, I like to tent all of the vias unless I know I'm going to access a particular via as a test point. And same thing on the back side. If we just flip this over to the back layer, you can see here, we do have a lot of vias scattered around. They are untented. However, I don't think that they're gonna be so close together that they're really going to create a problem with bridging or shorting. And of course, this does allow all of those vias to be used as test points if needed. Another thing that's very easy about Altium Designer is you can just change a design rule and it's gonna automatically tent all of that. You don't have to go through and do anything manual. Next point I would bring up is just some of the silk screen spacing. Some of the silk screen spacing is a little close. You can just see here with hand-drawn silk screen on some areas, it does get close to the reference designators, might create a design rule error. However, it's really not anything to worry about in terms of functionality. This is just for printing silk screen to ensure that your silk screen is readable. The other thing I would note here is that in some of these areas, like over here on the left-hand side of the microcontroller, some of these reference designators are bunched together a little bit. They can be a little difficult to read, but again, not gonna impact the functionality. If it were me, I probably would have done this hand-drawn line here pointing to different designators for this group of resistors and capacitors. But again, not gonna affect the functionality, and I think this is still really well done. And finally, let's just take a last look at this enclosure. Here, if I just zoom out and flip this thing all the way over, we have a really nice enclosure model. We even have Allen key screws on the back side. Overall, a really great job. Thank you very much, Alex, for sending this in, and you can expect your swag package to come in the mail any day now. Did you miss out on this design challenge? Well, fear not, because we have an even bigger design challenge going on right now. Right now we have the Tesla design challenge going on until end of March. Make sure to check out the link in the description. You can go watch our overview video of the Tesla vehicle display system files and you can participate to win some cool prizes. Thanks everybody for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and you'll be able to keep up with all of our tutorials and design challenges as they come out. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks. We'll see you next time.